we weren't really up to blogging. We've had very heavy hearts. I'm happy at this point to be having some simple jobs that we can keep ourselves busy this week. We can't finish our wall until we get the fridge in. Through the bus window. That's one thing I never thought I'd be doing. But the most important thing to me, it may have taken a long time, but I just had a better day and <sighs> grief is kind of like building a bus. You just have to take it one day at a time. We're Mela and Don. We uprooted our lives and left Los Angeles with the dream of converting an MCI D3 40-foot bus into a tiny home on wheels. We are sharing our progress one bite at a time. <laughs> what? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? <laughs> <laughs>It was a pretty rough week. We didn't talk to the camera a lot, so we'll try to give you a little recap of what we did. We weren't really up to blogging. We've had very heavy hearts since the passing of our cat, Zuri. But we try to keep ourselves busy, and luckily the work that we had to do this week was kind of mindless, meditative. Very busy work, for sure. Today's task is gonna to be to finally get a lot of our bed that we've built sanded down and ready for staining. Staining again, varnishing, and painting. So today, we got Mella working hard on the bus, sanding down the bedroom area so we can get ready to start staining and painting. My dad is helping out today. He's kind enough to volunteer some time and wire up an electrical area for me. Now that I understand electrical, I know he can do it faster. And hopefully he'll get it right the first time. I usually have to do it a couple times to make sure it's right. My desk area we're wiring up so one of the switches will turn off an outlet and then another switch will turn off the other outlet, meaning I can kill all power to my studio with one switch and all power to that other outlet, which will power our internet solutions with another switch. As for me, I'm gonna to try to get the doors and the last pieces completed for the bedroom side towers. And I got some um, closing push locks, which I'm excited about. All right, I got those doors to fit. And now I just need to uh, find some hinges of some kind. I'm sure I've got a box full of hinges or something. I'll be doing all the talking today. Uh, Mella's a little shaken up, to say the least. Mella's oldest cat, Zuri, and unfortunately she passed away just from old age this week. And we've both been pretty shaken up by it. Um, she's, Mella's spent more time with Zuri, lived with Zuri longer than any other living being, so 
you're a cat or dog person, then you know exactly how tough that can be. And I just love that cat. Make sure the people and pets that you have in your life know that, that you love them. How many of you have these miscellaneous tool bins? Just have to try to keep a hold and use what you got. This is the storage room, by the way. This is where most of our earthly possessions are while we're doing this build. So that's why we've got a lot of chaos behind me. So we ended up finding a few things that might come in handy on the bus build here. Door hinges, and then some smaller hinges. This will probably work for what I'm looking for. Got one set there, and one set there. So the cup holders that I were working on for our water bottles next to the bed. I need to shave a tiny bit out of them. Luckily my dad has this little Dremel sanding tool, so I'm gonna open them up a little bigger so that the water bottles will actually fit in them. We've got everything sanded down and now we're ready to stain the bedroom furniture so that it'll be that nice warm rooibos green tea stain that we've made. And that dries pretty quick but it still takes quite a while to get it on and to get it to look nice and honey looking like we've done it, it takes a good four or five coats. at this point to be having some simple jobs that we can keep ourselves busy this week and yet nothing too complicated. We painted our wall planks white. Break time's over. Time for that second coat. tea color. Kind of hard to tell unless you compare the two. Like this side is going to be painted the same as the feature wall, so we didn't stain it. And it's noticeably colder than the parts that we've warmed up here. You can really see the difference there. That's it. It's almost six o'clock. Nice spring day. Very comfortable. I'm gonna grill out with my parents. Relax a little this evening. Uh, but we'll see you guys tomorrow. We can't finish our wall right here until we get the fridge in because the only place we can put the fridge in, see this wall here? It has to extend even further, but we didn't want to do it until we put the fridge through the window so that there's no obstacles. It'll be much easier. So we're going to try to tie this window, pull it up and tie it so it'll stay open and then try to figure out how to get the fridge up here.
try a ladder, maybe try to angle it, see if we can push the box of the fridge up through the window. So the plan is we're gonna push the fridge against the ladder and see if three of us can push it up until we get it to a, what is it, a fulcrum point? Is that what it would be? A pivot point yeah, where the weight, yeah. so that we could get the weight on the other side. There he is down there. We decided to go with the 10.1 cubic foot frost-free Magic Chef refrigerator because it's relatively energy efficient. It's uh, almost cabinet depth and it was pretty inexpensive. Decided we did want to just go with a residential 120 fridge. There's a lot of RVs that do propane, but any place that I've been to that has an RV salvage yard, you see a lot of RVs that have caught fire. And the people there always told me that 90% of the RVs that caught fire is because their propane fridge caught on fire. Now, I'm not an expert. I got nothing against propane or propane fridges, and I'm sure somebody makes some great safe ones. But we're gonna try to go all electric if we can. My cousin Corey's coming to help. Because one of them is intermittent. Ready? You are. Yeah. There you go. Okay, we'll come back down with it or? There you go. Okay. Okay, I got it here. I'm going inside. Okay. Clear the window, okay, there, guys? Yeah, just don't push up any higher. Okay, we're gonna push towards you. Towards guys. me. Okay, then come in. Can you get in there? Take this side, and we'll just kind of go straight back this way. All right, come off. It's coming off. Coming off. Can you hear that? Huh? We got it here. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Okay, I'll get this in. Yeah. 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 Nothing to it. Yeah. All right. Thank Good you. Job. Good job, guys. <laughs> All right. I'm a little hot. Looks like I'm burning up. One successful thing done today, got the refrigerator in through the bus window. That's one thing I never thought I'd be doing. Another successful thing, although very frustrating. Last month I pulled my back out and Mella worked on adding some edge band trim and she got really frustrated putting it on. In the end, it didn't work. It was bubbling off in places, and we just knew it was gonna be a problem. So we went ahead and tore it off. I don't know if we even showed it in a video because it was another frustrating moment, but it left the whole glue residue. Which means that I had to go through with nail polish remover over every bit of that stupid area where the edge banding was. And then go through and sand it. then clean it and stain it again to get it to look the way we wanted it. I'm sure Mella felt very frustrated and I don't know if we had to bleep anything out, but today I'll tell you what, edge banding, that's what I have to say. Good morning. Each day is getting a little bit easier. 
even though uh, I knew Zuri was old and that her time was coming. <sighs> the grief is still huge and it's going to take a while, but it gets a little easier every day. And I'm just going to keep plugging away at this bus. She loved this bus. She loved going on road trips with us and she'll always be in this bus with us. So it's finally time to varnish this bed, seal it up. It's almost done. Got the cabinets all taped up and I'm ready to seal the wood with the rooibos stain on it. Man, those bedside tower cabinets were tricky <laughs> to get into. Building in a tiny space definitely has its challenges. made us these wooden cup holders to go in our bedside towers so we can keep water next to the bed at night. We decided to make them removable so we can try them out, see how they go. If we're not thrilled with them, we can remove them. I am almost done with the first coat. I just have the underneath side of the bed to do. So has been out here varnishing for at least 10 hours. No, not 10 hours. But 7 o'clock. I know, but... So one time we finished lunch, was like 2, there was 5 hours, and maybe I oh, had like... I thought you came out in the morning. I did, but it was like okay. 10, so... So she's been out here varnishing for 6, six hours. 6, 7 hours. And uh, at this point, with as nice and as happy as we are with our bedside towers overhead and our custom bed. Both of us are thinking maybe we should just go to the ReStore <laughs> and buy the rest of our furniture. Well, I did it. You probably can't tell at all that I did anything on camera, but it does look nice and it's gonna look better after another couple coats. <sighs> but the most important thing to me, it may have taken a long time, but I just had a better day and Grief is kind of like building a bus. You just have to take it one day at a time. You saw we probably talked about painting this wall. Before we can do that, um, we need to go ahead and add the addition to the wall. But that means we have to make some decisions on how big the hallway is and also possibly rethinking our bathroom and the way it's set up right now. But we'll get to those details on a bathroom video. I'm gonna do another layer of the Safe Coat EXT. That's the eco-friendly VOC free varnish that we've been using. And just with one coat that Mella did yesterday, it's looking good. There's no easy way to get the varnish on in this furniture because 
it's all built. <laughs> you gotta kind of kneel under it or kneel down and look up under it. And there's tiny little spaces that you're trying to get your hand and your paintbrush in. Then Don and his dad got to putting the second piece of wall in that divides our bedroom from our bathroom. I used the simple method that we'd used last time, just using some spare Luan that we had, holding in place, and using a scribe to mark the curve of the ceiling so we could cut that down. We use the same method that we've used on a lot of our furniture and the wall before, which was puck holes. And that piece of wood was a little bit bowed from top to bottom, so it took some convincing to really get it pushed into place and eventually got it lined up pretty nice. And now we know what the space is really going to feel like. Now that the wall is up, we are ready to paint our gray wall, but first we decided we are going to take a vacation. We'll share that with you next time. Today is one of those wonderful Midwest days when it's 85 degrees and 100% humidity, so it feels like you're in a sauna all day long. We've been sweating like crazy, just standing in the shade. My armpits sweat like nuts. Hot out. Yep. But Mella's all shiny. I don't know if you can tell. She's just completely covered in sweat, too. And we don't have our air conditioning in here working yet, so... It's on the list. The fans the fans help. We have to switch the fans off when we talk to you guys because it gets too noisy with fans on. Oh, the things we do for you. <laughs>